First, let's cross the US. Let me bring in Bobby Eberly. He is a Republican strategist and radio host. Bobby, lots of talk in the mainstream media. You won't be surprised to know that Donald Trump has finished. His campaign is already in deep trouble. Is this just hyperbole from the liberal media or was this campaign rally in Oklahoma a bit of a disaster for the president? Perhaps it signals something more telling. Oh, my gosh. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I really do. Um, You talked about two things, the polling and then the rally. The polling right now, I mean, going all the way till two weeks before the election, Mm. Hillary Clinton was leading Donald Trump. Indeed. Two weeks before the election. And so but this really polling is bad, it. though, Bobby. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, this is Fox News polling, by the way, showing a 12 point deficit between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Yeah, Dan, I really wouldn't put stock in that right now, because if you okay. really go into the data, you will always see this is one of the things that happens in this country with these polling locations. Republicans in those polls are under a sample of like seven to 10 percent almost every time. So you don't get a fair reading on what's going on. And it's really easy right now to strike out against the president, whether he was, if it was this time with Barack Obama or with President Trump, when you've got COVID and the shutdowns and all the things that you guys are going through, the first person that people want to blame is the current leader. Oh, yeah, it's a disastrous time to be president or prime minister through this COVID-19 battle. And and you've got to feel sorry for whoever's a leader. Look, I want to play some of the highlights from this rally and get you to respond, okay, Bobby? So this was the moment that was particularly controversial. Donald Trump encouraging testing to be ramped down rather than up in the U.S. You know, testing is a double-edged sword. When you test, when you do testing to that extent, you're going to find more people. You're going to find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. Now, Bobby, Trump's team have come out and said that was a joke. But 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 do you think he was kidding? Well, I think the first part is the part that's telling, Dan. And that is that over here, what you're seeing is the media really hyping these, oh, my gosh, the number of cases are going up. The number of cases are going up. Well, look who is emerging back into the workforce. You know, we've had this all shut down. And whether it's restaurants, whether it's other companies, whether it's gyms, they are all going through a protocol now of bringing their employees back and testing, testing. So all these people that were just sitting around, if they're testing positive, of course, they're going to there's going to be more because now we've got more people going back to work. But it doesn't change the, the underlying conditions. The media want to hype up the number of tests, the number of confirmed cases with a danger level. Okay. And that's the thing. Is yeah. That, there were a couple of other right? moments where he where he seemed to belittle sure. the virus. Uh, let's take a listen to them. We got tests. We got another one over here. The young man's 10 years old. He's got the sniffles. He'll recover in about 15 minutes. That's a case. Add up to it. That's a case. That's a case. It's, by the way, it's a disease without question. Has more names than any disease in history. I can name Kung Flu. I can name 19 different versions of names. Many call it a virus, which it is. Many call it a flu. What difference? Now, look, Bobby, he's a great entertainer. I give him that. But what about people who say describing COVID-19 as Kung Flu is clearly racist? Well, it's first of all, that's not racist. That's just being silly. And the thing about down but doesn't it link here, coronavirus to, to China by calling it Kung flu? Oh, absolutely, it does. And that's that's 100 percent fine with me. If you recall, CNN, PBS, NPR, all the major networks called it Chinese virus. Hmm. As soon as I think there's a little, you know, people group that gets together and says, you know what? Okay, there's Trump's no doubt it came from China. That, right. Yeah, there's no doubt at all. And as far as downplaying it, what I always do, I'm a numbers guy mm. and I don't I don't like to speak in the hyperbole. I just look at the numbers. And what I always fall back to is the fact that 80 percent of the people who get it are that have problems with it are 60 and over. And the most telling one, 99 point like 5 percent that die 
have something else. It's like COVID kills no one statistically by itself. You have to have something else. 99.4% of the people who die have heart disease, obesity, hypertension, something like that. Well, yes, so- but it's still 122,000 deaths, isn't it? So, I mean, it's a, it's a heavy toll. Uh, look, I want to take a little listen to the moment when Donald Trump defended this walk down a ramp which the New York Times had suggested was indicative of some sort of declining health issue. I've got myself a problem, General, because I'm wearing leather bottom shoes, which is good if you're walking on flat surfaces. It's not good for ramps. It had no handrail. It was like an ice skating rink. I said, General, there's no way I can make it down that ramp without falling on my ass, General. So I said, General, get ready, because I may grab you so fast. (laughs) Because I can't fall with the fake news watcher. They said, you couldn't lift your hand up to your mouth with water. I said, I just saluted 600 times. She said, well, I know what you did. You had on a very good red tie that's sort of expensive. It's silk, because they, they look better. They have a better sheen to them. And I don't want to get water on the tie. And I don't want to drink much. It's an interesting one, isn't it, Bobby? Because, again, very entertaining way to deal uh, with these rumors around his health. However, Joe Biden's campaign are making it Mm -hmm. a big issue now. Super PACs connected to him have actually Mm -hmm. started to run advertisements suggesting that there is something wrong with the president's health. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, two points on that, Dan. One is that actually was my favorite part of the rally uh, because I did find it entertaining. I found it to be storytelling. I found it to be humorous. That was that was my favorite part, like po- politics aside, because um, because part of it was a message. Part of it was he was trying to counter what the media, New York Times and others are saying. Even my son, when they, they did this West Point speech, he came up to me and he said, Dad, you know what I heard that? President Trump's sick. He's like moving really slow and stuff. And this is what you've got to counter. I don't know how, you know, your prime minister is attacked, but with over here, President Trump, it's nonstop. And some of the times it just gets, you know, he would not have been as energized and as animated if he were truly ailing at this rally. I mean, he just looked 100 percent healthy. And the other side of your question with Joe Biden, yeah, the politics of it is that I think they have to go at the, their thinking, their team is thinking, but that we have to go at this health angle because Biden is getting hammered with the same thing. He is getting hammered nonstop with his forgetfulness, with his stuttering, with his not knowing what's going on. Can't even quote, you know, our uh, declaration of independence. No offense to you guys, but, uh, you know, it's just, none taken. Don't worry. Uh, okay, but 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 whether he's healthy or not, he definitely mm-hmm. looked furious by the time he arrived back in Washington D.C. because there was some sort of TikTok campaign that is the social mm-hmm. media site by young people, mm-hmm. which managed right. to hijack Trump's ticketing operation, and seemingly. Mm-hmm. All of these people had registered for tickets to the event, hadn't turned Mm -hmm. up, and it meant most of this arena was was empty. So after Trump's campaign had promised massive crowds and said that there was huge demand, he was obviously fuming about the fact that it didn't happen. So the point is, for for, Mm -hmm. for my, well, the, the interesting fact for me is, do we know, Bobby, whether the demand was there and these people just couldn't get tickets because of this campaign, or actually... Is there not the same demand to go to a Trump rally in 2020? And if that's the case, isn't that a worrying sign? Because Trump always believed these rallies were so indicative of the strength of his base. Right. That's a great question. And I think here is, and I'll answer it. I just, I want to add in that I do think in this case that the campaign miscalculated a few things. They did not say things. I'm a communications guy. And they, they, there was a few things that they just said that it just didn't make any sense. It's like, why say it? And here's my example is that I, I'm in Texas, so I couldn't go to the rally, but I cover these all the time. This was one that I actually sat down and watched the whole thing. I was very excited about watching it. 
And the numbers that are coming in, it's looking like seven, eight million people watch this online. Now, he picked Tulsa for some reason, which is only a, a city in the United States of 400,000 people. So you had to wonder when they started announcing 800,000 or a million requests mm. that you're going to get the whole city. They needed to realize well, something was up. That. Right. They needed to realize something was up because that's double the population of the city you're holding it in. So maybe these TikTok folks, you know, AOC was was doing it and, and hyped up the number. But I think one of the things I think there's two factors there. One is that, you know, if I thought that there, in this smaller kind of city that you would have a, a historic event, you know, that you've never seen in the history of the world, 800,000 or a million people showing up, I wouldn't go. I'd watch it on TV, and millions of people did. The other thing I'm noticing, too, is that I'm not sure how it is in the U.K., but as things are reopening, you know, Texas, where I am, is kind of ahead of the curve. We're reopening, but people are still slow to react. Yeah. And, I mean, People are nervous are to leave their houses still. Yeah, we're at restaurants that can do 50% capacity, so you go in and you see some tables blocked off, but even the ones that are open aren't full yet. And so to, to hype that. So it could be because of COVID. Well, look, it's absolutely fascinating. Thank you for your analysis. Uh, do come back because obviously we've got a very busy election season ahead and it is getting heated.